Now, on the on the subject of the afterlife, the um, dialogue bet between a priest and a dying man, 1782, by the Marquis de Sade, the dying man's representation of uh, strict atheist to the point of fanaticism. Um, it's his charming sense of humour, as is the fact that in the story the priest is a is persuaded to join the dying man in entering a chamber where uh, six women await them both. Um, the line he uses after he he humbly says things like, "Perhaps what we are what we are in is is a machine, um, and it, it it all operates like a machine, but there are just some some things for." for which we do not yet understand. David, David Hume talked about this, um, and Richard Dawkins cited David Hume. He, there was a, an, an analogy pitched to say that if you find, were to find a watch in the desert, you would notice, despite the fact that you sense the, the oceans and the rocks and the trees and the sand to all have been part of nature, your discovery of of a of a uh, a wristwatch, you would have to con you'd have to know it were designed, and the human body is um, it's it, it's used it's used to support the creationist movement. But Richard Dawkins, Professor Dawkins' book, The Blind Watchmaker, attacks William Paley's uh, analogy of this of this watch discovering this watch. Um, uh, and he, he goes into talks about how the uh, the design of the human eye could could be better than it is, based on how its uh, its stages of evolution. Um, so it, and this is very important for Dawkins' dual force represent representation of how. Uh, evolution functions. He, he talks about it functioning as a combination of um, non-random selection and chance. So the th those both of those as, as some sort of a intertwined force is, is why see I, I, if, if we're if we're considered by nature the the pinnacle of Earth's evolutionary uh, demonstration then why don't we have the why, why didn't our, our eyes evolved in uh, evolve through stages of um, the most refined developmental stages possible and Dawkins book the blind watchmaker proves that you know the rept reptilian eye has certain advantages uh, to it that our eyes did not inherit um, so all, all life having a common ancestor and that's ancestor not incestor nor a woman named Anne um, is, is part of it's a more important way to describe evolution as a entirety than survival of the fittest and to um, enlist conscript you to competition um, at all times which uh, it's not how our forebearers behaved and it's not how it's healthy to behave uh, and you, unless you want to help create more illness discoveries for, for the, the friends of Big Pharma. Um, so, moment I'll be. That's right, so the Marquis has his dying man say, well, um, you know, uh, better to be, to have a good heart. To, to be truth, true, true, to your, true to yourself, calm your soul with philosophy, and um, 
And so what about this afterlife? Um, man today, worm tomorrow, the next day a fly. Uh, is it not to, to keep steadily on existing? And um, that's, that's a bleak... You might say that's a bleak view. Uh, also, there's not much hope for those who have nominated to be cremated. Um, to to uh, partake in the process, but um, so yeah, if you feel pressured between a between um a dichotomy of uh, your body goes to medical science or you get cremated, let that be another indication to you about how much religion has uh, uh, f force fisted its hand in the uh, in um into the arse of, of healthcare, um, figuring that the arse of healthcare will have no choice but to turn the other cheek uh, without an end. Now, the, the other rep position is um, intellectual honesty concerning maps. You know, uh, that got, uh, Nicholas Copernicus showed we're, we're on a round earth, Think, think, makes you think of how enslaved these commoners were if they were all going, oh, finally, some education. So they take a break from all their, um, you know, slave duties and look up to a kingdom overlook point where a man has a scroll unroll, unraveled and, and it's read from to the people. And now the shape of that scroll unraveled would be a rectangle. Uh, a, a vertically oriented rectangle and from that the dogma of, of a four-cornered flat earth is instilled um, convincing people they'll, tru they'll truly uh, risk, risk walking off the edge of the earth so yeah it's, it's one thing that this was their own only way to be educated um, it's quite another that that education was, by today's standards, absolute slavery and um, a contrasting point of view is not not even permitted. And so, and so, by the thirteenth century, you find that once William Tyndale was was giving people the opportunity to essentially discover errors in the Bible, uh, they went for him and burned him to death immediately. Now. Uh, if you're true to the modern maps of Earth, then you know that heaven and hell, you know someone in a country at a polar opposite to Earth now having this conversation and pointing to, pointing up in the sky saying Jesus is up, up there. Um, they're pointing off into two opposite directions in space. You know, you know Carl Sagan, um, if he granted Jesus... Uh, velocity to be the speed of light would have calculated that but uh, has calculated that by now Jesus' ascension to heaven would have him uh, um, outside of our solar system by now but still within the confines of the Milky Way galaxy nevertheless it's possible to be an, an agnostic in the, on the question of the afterlife and I would argue it's the only honest way to approach the question because I, I truly hate these people saying um, they, there is definitely an afterlife um, and here are its political rules. You'll, be, you'll go to the bad one where you get tortured and uh, if you break the rules, you'll go to the good one where if you, you're, you'll be eternally rewarded uh, if you abide by the rules. Was, if, you, if you want to posit the concept of an afterlife by definition it either means after after this life um, and all it encompasses and, uh, or else no one knows uh, and then and therefore no one knows what it's going to entail so it's a surprise for the priest <laughs> it's a surprise for the priest and and the member of the the person sitting in the pew equally. Um, so, w what? Uh, 
agnosticism originally meant, I was talking about it yesterday, is that if you, if you get asked the question, are you a theist or a non, an atheist, a non-theist, um, and then if they say, or an agnostic, they, they're playing piggy in the middle with you, really, if they, unless they haven't read definitions, because um, they're also using the Bible to define atheism, which is what we've agreed to be unfair. Like, um, we're not letting, we're not, we're not tolerating Christians defining what Hinduism is. Like, we, if you cut, you can, uh, if you look up Hindu in a dictionary, you don't have, um, someone who, a person who may pay homage to that stupid elephant with numerous arms. Um, you have some tolerance shown to, and, and let let uh, self definition as a group be be a gesture to the Hindus to to suggest the definition for their own group for our dictionaries. Uh, in in my submission, and and so God, the term godlessness, godless, for instance, you can still read it in certain dictionaries has um, synonymous. Uh, immoralist twists in its in its definition, uh, or apostate, someone who has abandoned their faith. So it suggests a failure. Like it must have been a failure that they abandoned their faith. I would admit that it's a failure if you abandon it. The, the song "It Must Have Been Loved" by Roxette. That's a, that's an abandonmental failure. But you might abandon religious faith in the church for. Uh, a number of a number of sensible reasons and um, why aren't people after if if they're still if they're going against Copernicus and they're in favor of the flat earth society saying that NASA's rockets don't exist and the deceptions and there's the tri uh, going to the moon was to trick you, to make you think the earth was round. Um, you know, these people should join the Flat Earth Society and make them part of the, of the Uniting Church, or they should stop saying heaven is above you and hell's underneath you and that's the afterlife. Which way do you want to go? There are other, to, do, to, do, to do otherwise is to go against your education completely at school. Um, on not just the topic of sexuality, which they will in church, but against the entire uh, entire world by its shape, um, which churches will do, um, or there to comprehend that asking questions, wonderment about the afterlife, is something that the Bronze Age could have had. And see, Bronze Age is Bronze Age people had it. Um, with more, with more sincer sincerity in their day, because some of them did truly had lacked any means to travel at any length that would falsify or verify the flat Earth doctrine um, of of the shape of 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 the Earth. Though, though I, as I agree, they had they had. Um, Earth's shadow appearing on the moon. They had the scorching yet circular shape of the eye, of the sun on their eyes. They had that the earth, um, the moon is round in shape. So between the sun and the moon, why couldn't they argue that? Well, surely we must be on something round too. And the answer to that is is that um, that they truly would were beyond dictated to when these kingdoms unravel these scrolls. Um, not only that, but they were at risk of being nominated for a random execution any day. So, um, they're, they're, they're the only implied way to uh, fail to be nominated for an execution uh, would be to be as attentive as possible to the reading of these scrolls when they were publicly addressed. Yeah, and and through force, in, in, in impede them spreading around, um, so that it got back to the point where, 
What what Nietzsche does is that though in certainly a independent author and and thinker in a number of levels, what he does. You you can see that from his point of view, he he was almost bored of his own philosophy education because he kind of writes, "Thus spoke Zarathustra," which is a, a satire or a parody of Jesus going out and making disciples and giving them teachings, um, except that they're they're godless. Like he, you know, the the famous line he sees the church worshippers singing songs in a forest, and he goes. Um, he approaches him saying, um, um, what are you doing? And then the guy's like, well, w with religious singing, do I praise my Lord? And he goes, has this man not yet heard in his forest that God is dead? Um, and he brings in, so he poetically uses the term the death of God to essentially say the same thing as the ancient Greeks were, that we don't need them. But, um... What's frustrating is that, yeah, the only excuse that you've got for why uh, cr crucial Greek, um, Greek ideas that were at the apex of their most wi wisest philosophical concepts um, would have been learnt more, argued more, and would have overturned more religious arguments unless the religious had some advantage and that advantage was surely force, given who they were executing, given um, given the witch trials, given the heresy hunts. Uh, you know, I don't even think the biblical story about Moses, it's geographically incorrect because he traveled, it's... He's no. The story is saying he travelled a something called the Sea of Reeds, which is a low tide marsh. Not that the Red Sea developed its own walling system, but um, you you have you have that he is telling these 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 slaves might have had a language amongst themselves that was tremendously polytheistic. In fact, Moses introducing a law to them, thou shalt have no other gods before me, it meant having, have one God, have one God. If, if their talk was, um, you know, there's a God of love, a God of rain, a, go a God of uh, growth of vegetation, a God of uh, fruit trees blo blooming, a God of uh, romantic wishes coming true, a God of... Uh, healing a god of, you know, if they if if they were describing all these processes, by way of saying there's a god of this and a god of that, then to order them to to suddenly say uh, that there is only one god, is to, it's like essentially ripping every every letter but one out of their whole alphabet. Uh, and so then you find it's because it's in, it's inhibiting their language and their way to talk, because so many of these processes um, couldn't be caused by the one God unless he was an opponent of himself. So um, that confuses them, and then they run off to hug a, a golden bull calf, and then that makes Moses so angry that he smashes the tablets and says. Now I need you to go and commit a mass suicide in order to purify yourselves. Um, and that's what he orders his slaves to do. But if you look at it, well, who was in the, who was in the wrong and who was in the right? Uh, what if these slaves were in such a state of panic by the fact that they were getting told, you know, essentially gut your whole vocabulary and believe in just one God? without being offered a substitute vocabulary first. And then when they're seen hugging um, a golden bull calf, they get ordered to, to perform a mass suicide for the sake of self-purification. Uh, that makes uh, Moses seem uh, a bad leader. Uh,
So th thus I also think once the topic of the afterlife in a church is talked about beyond the word, the mere word afterlife, you're learning more about people that are after your life as in the context of they have you in their pursuits, if not just merely mentally, because the, no, none of them are doing anything but bluffing, uh, if not host bluffing and threatening um, by insisting to you that they not only know all, all there is to know about the most important concepts of afterlife, but that they will introduce you to a political system um, that pertains to the afterlife and that they know all about it. Whereas I would just call it afterlife. The, 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 the question of the afterlife is responded to with agnosticism beyond our limits. Uh, you don't know it and neither do I. Uh, um, and and we, ca we can't know it. Um, in, in human form, we can't know it. That's a, though not logically necessarily discounting the Marquis de Sade's dying man's um, clinging to some sense of positivity prior to death. The interesting thing about the story is you're, you're never told how or why this man is dying. It's, a, it's simply to prop up a scenario where a, a man is dying and a priest is, is approaching him to try and uh, solicit his con conversion to a religion before he's, he's dead. Um, Um, so yeah, that's, I suppose there's a, tr a threefold, that your, that your creative, creative workings, uh, the legacy, if you if your parents now, your, your family, your children, um, they're a part of a glimpse of m mortality as, as, as much as a person can see it, um, Hitchens' speech about that, he says, uh, I would never do what all, all monotheists... If I were ever told to do what all mon monotheists respect and admire the man who said, um, yes, yes, uh, Lord, I'll take my son I Isaac out and I'll gut my kid to show my love of God, I, I would say, no, fuck you. Um is what Christopher Hitchens uh, had to say about that concept. So, you know, I, I'm not, despite, despite surveillance agencies making themselves known to me at various times and in various ways, they'll find, they'll find that I like things, I admire things like um, certain parts of the, the prayer in the Boondock Saints, but, um, you know, Bowie never redacted his, uh, uh, his disbelief in God, but yet in songs like Black Tie, White Noise, he, he, he'll sing, you know, um, he'll, he, he's singing against racism, singing, um, Oh Lord, just let me see him, let me call him brother. And what I'm suggesting is that when with Bowie's earlier statements, in answer to the question, do you believe in God? He said, I believe in an energy form, but I shouldn't like to put a name to it. Now, what to my mind, what that represented was um, Einstein and, and Bowie's posting uh, in his album inserts, Einstein books, um, uh, and is surely aware of his Einstein's discussions about God. Uh, that that is a sort of amorphous energy is is what's meant by the term not a n not a mind that um it, it's close to sort of what mystics are on about but it, it doesn't it doesn't extend much beyond that as as our way of approximating a a reply to the god question um not a mind that's judging us and may uh, t subtracting from our self-accountability. 
And yeah. So. So if if these adaptations of um, that are part inspired by the, the Boonock Saints prayer that I've written on my on my wall, on my walls are um, they're not they they are not a concession away from non theism. Uh, that words like God and Lord, are, but Bishop Spong will will discuss this to no end. He he believed in a, a non-theistic God, a non-theistic conception of God. And that is, that means he was opposed to a supernatural God with a mind who is, though you're in, though you're in a, locked into a relationship with him, will, uh, is is also, is judging your every move, watching you while you sleep, watching you while you masturbate, watching you while you have sex, watching you while you're in the shower, watching you while you're on the toilet, watching your private thoughts. Um, that whose moral system, see, if if you have uh, true friendships with people, you're the the moral back and forth is because you choose to you choose to gesture your morals to your friends because you like you like them and you like the friendship you have with them you you don't do it because you're go, you're constantly thinking oh shit I, ne I need to be nice to this person or i risk being sent to hell uh that makes it bypasses what we mean by morality and it makes the sensibility for being moral, the contrived one, because you're saying, well, it allows for the possibility of, I don't really care about you, I'm just being nice to you because I want God to recognize my service to him and to send me into heaven with him after I die. And that's one reason to reject, uh, as Einstein did, to reject a God who requires um, us to base our morality around th uh, fear of punishment or hope for reward after death. 